most people have to put glasses on to read, I have to take them off. Many years ago when I was attending Huntington College, I studied music and I took an art history course as an elective one year. And I remember studying so many different genres of art, contemporary, historic, and just learned a lot. And uh, the story that we read in this morning's gospel about the apostle Thomas reaching out to touch the wounds of the risen Christ has inspired many beautiful and haunting uh, pieces of art throughout history. And one of my favorites is by Italian Baroque master Caravaggio. Uh, he did a piece of art entitled The Incredulity of St. Thomas. Taylor, can you bring that up? Good, thank you. It was painted somewhere between 1601 and 1602. And the painting focuses on Thomas's face and his surprise as Jesus gently holds his hand and guides it into the wounds in his side as the other two disciples look on. And what could have been gruesome comes across as loving. The expression on Jesus' face, the way he holds Thomas's hand, the act of meeting his friend right where he is in his faith journey. And the story of Thomas is not one about doubt, no matter how history has dubbed him. Our gospel today picks up right where our Easter story left off last week. Last week's gospel ended with Mary staying at the tomb and meeting the risen Christ after Peter and John saw the empty tomb and then returned home to the locked upper room. Today we are told that all the disciples were still locked away that evening in fear, all except for Thomas, who was apparently the only one not bound by fear and who had gone out from their hiding place. And as it were, that he missed Jesus' appearing to those behind the locked door. He missed Jesus saying, peace be with you, and showing them his hands and his side. He missed that moment when Jesus' friends transitioned from being disciples, those who follow, to being apostles, those who are sent. He missed the opportunity to, to know, to really know, that his giving in to fear and abandoning Jesus in the hour of need just days before was somehow forgiven. I imagine that if I were in Thomas' shoes and I was the brave one who left that upper room, only to return and hear the story about Jesus' visit from my friends, I too would be incredulous. This is a wonderful word. It's a big word. It's defined as a state of being unwilling or unable to believe something. And Thomas was definitely incredulous when he heard about Jesus' visit. And so he asked for exactly what his friends had already received, the chance, the opportunity to see Jesus and touch his wounds, to know him as the risen Christ, and receive his peace. A week later, Jesus met Thomas and his incredulous faith right where he was. And Jesus meets us today where we are during our own sometimes incredulous faith. Jesus appeared in the upper room and stood among them saying, peace be with you. And then he turned to Thomas and said, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. In Caravaggio's painting, we see these words put into action. As Jesus takes Thomas's finger and puts it into his side up to a knuckle, and this is incarnation at its rawest. There is no choice to stand on the sidelines of faith when you've encountered the resurrected Christ. And so there can be no doubt going forward for Thomas. He has been met by Jesus, and his response is to let go of his incredulity by saying, my Lord and my God. And why does this story come every year in the lectionary readings? I think it's because it has so much to tell us about living as followers of Christ after the resurrection. And there's so much to be said and learned from this story. But what Caravaggio's painting tells us, along with God, John's gospel, is that Jesus, human, divine, resurrected, will always find us and keep offering the promises of God's abiding love then when we lock ourselves away in fear, when we feel like we've somehow missed the chance to be with the Lord Jesus, that he will always come to us. And I think this story about Thomas reminds us that following Jesus means something more than overcoming fear and doubt. It means being willing to reach out and touch the wounds that we inflict on others in order to bring healing and restoration. It means risking your heart and being willing to step into the messy difficult and scary places of hurt and grief to bring peace. And maybe this story is in the lectionary every year to remind us 
that following Jesus means bringing your whole self, doubt and all, and standing with others in difficult situations. It means going out to be with the vulnerable, to those places of greatest need, and to proclaim shalom. It means going out and making those connections, those real, tangible connections, because that's where we truly discover the reality of resurrection and where we proclaim our Lord and our God. Amen. Please stand. Thank you.